Ladies, gentlemen, and NBs of my YouTube audience, I am more than happy to announce even more ways to enjoy your favorite PS2 games on your preferred X rectangle. Because while I was making the A3SX2 video, emulation enthusiasts were hard at work to put a standalone PS2 emulator on retail Xbox. Enter XBSX2, the PS2 emulator that allows Xbox to unashamedly do what PlayStation won't, allows you to play PS2 games for free on a console. Let's get into it. So first and foremost, greetings! My name is Efren and I like playing games on the Xbox and telling you all about those games in a video. Thanks for tuning in. Recently those games have been from Sony's PlayStation 2, emulated through programs. And because I work so damn slow, a new program has hit the market on the retail side of Xbox, XBSX2. Now I'm not all that knowledgeable about the program's history or its development, so it might not be a new emulator to hit retail Xbox, but it was gaining popularity and discussion online in August of 2022, when I was putting the final touches on the Aether SX2 video. How about that? So in a kind of follow-up video, we're taking a look at XPSX2. The setup is very different and very fast. I'll quickly cover that for people who want to do it. There are some differences between the two PS2 emulators, mostly in the menus, but from my experience they are very much the same, apart from a handful of small performance details, not worth getting into. I am not comparing the two emulators, nor am I going to be doing a huge quality review for multiple games on XB, because both emulators are getting rapid fire updates and it's really annoying. These videos are going to age like milk. And as a matter of fact, as I'm writing and recording this, both emulators got updates. As of 9-15-2022, there are changes to both programs. So cool. Which undoes half amounts amount of work, recording, writing, etc, etc. I had to scrap a small comparison part of this video. Instead, I'll just now talk about my honest opinions about the retail emulator and my preferred choice. You want to know which one is qualitatively better? Fuck you! It's exhausting switching between the two emulators, which feel like they're getting frequent updates all the damn time, and they both more or less stem from the PCXS2 changes. Really there isn't a whole lot of discernible difference between them. I already shot my load on an emulation video this year. I'm done. The message for this video series is all the same anyhow. You can now play PS2 games on your Xbox, now in a variety of ways, and one of them is XPSX2. Let's take a look at it. Now, retail emulators have always been a hell of a lot easier to install thanks to amazing contributions of several individuals in the emulation community. But one is definitely the face of retail emulation, Gamer13. They have been doing a whole lot of work to sneak free emulators and programs on the MS Store. They've made an app store housing all the essential emulation applications you'd want to download for free. To get that app store, open internet, open internet, oh god damn it. To get that app store, open an internet browser on the Xbox, Microsoft Edge, and go to gamer13.github.io. That's gamer without an E. Text will be on screen and in the description of this video, although Bing should just fill in search results for the website. Simply scroll down and hit download app. A pop-up will appear asking you to open the Microsoft Store. Go ahead and do that and finally download Gamers app. On that app, you'll find Durango FTP, RetroArch, and of course, XPSX2. Click on the one for the series console. There's one for Xbox One again, but will undoubtedly be poor quality for this console has weaker hardware. Why did I write that sentence so weirdly? Click on the install, it'll ask you if you want to open the MS store. You could certainly go directly to the XPSX2 download page without Gamers app, but I have had issues with it recently. Namely, the store page just won't load. Should be fixed now and I'll leave the website address on screen and in the description. But Gamer13's app houses more emulators and applications that you might want to also try out and download for free. It's cool, really well put together, and very handy to have installed if you don't already. Anyway, get XPSX2 installed, launch that sucker, and look just like the other standalone emulators on Xbox so far. From here, it's just like ASX2 setup, but the menu's slightly different. Find your BIOS memory card directories in this menu icon, the folder, a future Monopoly piece, I guarantee it, either in the Xbox's internal storage or USB drive. This time, the USB directory is located in D. Do this with your games as well. And you're done. Go play some games. Seriously, that's it. 
Go. But maybe, maybe you should stay around for the rest of the video. So XPS X2 has all the features I already talked about in my Aether SX2 video. Widescreen, upscaling up to 8 times native res, auto BIOS, multiplayer multi-tap, and render switching. One of the big selling points from the retail Reddit announcement was that the emulator played some games better than Aether SX2. I can only confirm one. GT4 was playable at 4K, even on rougher tracks like the nighttime race tracks. You can play the game in its entirety without it crashing. The game, however, takes massive dumps on frame rates at 4K occasionally, and there is still the pixelated shine glitch on both hardware renderers. Thank goodness for software mode, which does feel better than Aether, and is also faster to switch to. The latest update seems to have fixed the hardest of frame drops at 4K, so it's pretty smooth sailing now, which is good. And the latest version of Aether now also makes GT4 fully playable with no crashing, just janky shiny bits in all hardware mode renderers. These updates were much needed because the early September build was real bad. No! Sly Cooper and Need for Speed Most Wanted took a step back and it became a very choppy, low frame rate mess. Not as bad as RetroArch, there were some moments of quality 60 FPS only to return to crap. Still playable, but nowhere near as smooth as Aether in my first video. That was the good, then the bad, then there's the ugly. Jack 2. Jack 2 would do this abysmal thing where the game would stutter and slow down all the way till it was just frozen in a particular frame, at completely random moments of gameplay. Several times I waited for the inevitable application crash. It only happened once and that was at the beginning of the game. It was bizarre. Everything I mentioned has been fixed and is now looking really good. It's great now, actually. Xbox users have a very good PS2 emulator on retail in case they don't care for setting up dev mode and installing Aether SX2. I did still experience some crashes when starting up the program or trying to restart a game, but they are easily repairable programs. Just quit the program and restart. A lot of the games run very well at upscale resolutions. Software mode is now faster to switch to, and controls are tight and responsive. And with all that said, I am happy to recommend XPS X2 for your PS2 emulation needs on retail Xbox. Do I prefer this one over Aether? Nope. Now don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic emulator you should totally get if you're interested. I might be in the minority here, but I like having all my emulation stuff separate from my retail Xbox, because I'm a weirdo freak. You fucking freak! You're a freak! I also like the sandbox element of dev mode, allowing me to pick and choose what I download and how I get to play around with it. For example, Aether also had a pretty rough early September build, almost mirroring XPS X2 performance issues. It also changed the game list layout, which, uh uh, that's not gonna fly with me. Dev mode allows me to take matters into my own hands and roll the program back to an earlier version, like August 8th's Ace X2, which was working phenomenally on all games. On the retail side, you have to wait for the program manager to update it for fixes and improvements. Now, they have been working very fast to update it, but if there is an issue with another update, you might be stuck with the busted version for some time. Also, this is completely subjective. I like Aether's menu and UI more than XPS X2. I just think it's more organized and designed in a way that logically makes sense to me. Yeah, it's a small and petty thing to care about, but shut up! And then of course, dev mode is kind of a cool concept that allows you to kind of run experimental or different things on your Xbox. I long await the day I can run Linux on my Xbox. Don't think that's gonna happen soon though, but if it does, I wanna go ahead and do that and I don't think that's gonna happen on retail side Xbox. Maybe in some kind of weird Internet Explorer workaround, but I want kind of like the full experience. So with all that said, which one do I recommend using for the best experience? I don't care, man, I'm tired. <laughs> Honestly, use whichever one you feel comfortable with and whichever is better for your situation. And do not let the fear of being banned impact your decision. I get asked this question quite often when it comes to retail emulators. Can I be banned on Xbox Live for using emulators on retail mode? I'm going to answer this once and for all, so pay attention now.
If you are only downloading and using emulators on retail site Xbox, you cannot be banned. The only people who can be banned are people putting emulators on Microsoft stores. But honestly, MS has been pretty lax and inactive when it comes to issuing these bans. The website application or hosting account might get pulled or be down for a while, but you can be sure that it'll be back in a very short time. The average emulation enjoyer does not have to worry about bans. I'm sure Microsoft is fully aware that people are using their machines for emulating games of their competitors. They just can't be bothered to give a shit about it. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Now go out there and use your game console for what it was meant for, to play games. Now with more options to choose from without a paywall or subscription fee. Oh, get fucked Sony and Nintendo. Guess that's it for me, this is just a quick one. Let me know in the comments which PS2 game you'll be playing on your Xbox. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. My name's Efren, adios.